Canterbury Cathedral is the most important church in the land. It was continuously a building site since the early Middle Ages, since the Normans, in fact, uh, with several campaigns. And the most important one followed a very tragic period in the late 12th century with the murder of Thomas Beckett and then a great fire which destroyed a previous, recently completed choir. So it sort of introduced French Gothic to England and became hugely influential because it was such an important pilgrimage site. This never ended and the building campaigns continued into the 14th century with the rebuilding of the nave and then the transits. Canterbury in fact has unusually two set of transits, Eastern and Western. And it is these Western transits and their phenomenally large windows with very interesting tracery that we are focusing on here. So uh, the nave was uh, really rebuilt in the second half of the uh, 14th century and the transepts in the second decade of the 15th century. They belong to the so-called perpendicular style. This is a very interesting moment in English Gothic architecture. What made it so popular was that it was very uh, novel in its appearance. It was easy to reproduce on a large and a small scale. We see it here on a very, very large scale. So, and it focused also on fenestration, which has been one of the preoccupations of Gothic for a very long time. So the windows in the transepts are attributed to um, Thomas Mapleton, who is a very interesting architect. Um, we know that he was active in the 15th century from about 1408 to almost about 1440s. Uh, his first project was the cloister of Durham Cathedral. And then he went on to work in London, including Westminster Abbey. And we can really see that his talent was recognized quite early on because he's moving up in the hierarchy of buildings. He seems to have also been in Florence and advised on the building of the dome in Florence. So a project famously then associated with Brunelleschi and still one of the great sites of Europe. So like many architects in his day and earlier, he traveled around to learn the trade and to see what was happening. He then returned to England, was appointed master mason to the king, and then was appointed at Canterbury, where, as we know from the second half of the 14th century, this great final rebuilding campaign was in progress. So he was working very much in the milieu of the day, which is still perpendicular. So once perpendicular settled in as a sort of embedded itself as a fashion, it remained so until the 16th century, until the dissolution of the monasteries. So what we see in uh, Mapleton's great window on the south side of the western transept is a sort of tr three part height arrangement, very similar in fact to the great window of Gloucester Cathedral. So one of the great windows of late medieval um, uh, design in, in England. It has two sort of lateral windows within windows, which are defined in the head of the window, in the arches. And then this ha it has this upright central section. And then the horizontality is reinforced with transoms and these very identical continuing uh, panels that kind of follow in tiers. So what we have in this particular piece is a very exciting moment when that more traditional arch design meets the horizontal and the vertical perpendicular. So a right angle meets the arch. So it's the kind of slightly older type of Gothic design and this very modern perpendicular design. So I think this is what makes this particular element really, really fascinating. We can also see the Khan stone, which has been used in Canterbury throughout. We can see some of the later repairs. This is something that often happens and it's, it's, a, it's a very kind of normal way of seeing how the masonry involves over time, over decades. Uh, we can also see type of the molding. This is the actual shape of the individual elements, the cusps under the arch, the arch itself. And as I said, the, these kind of vertical and, 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 and horizontal elements of the perp. So we can see all that coming together and you know, really makes us think about the design itself. I don't think we can see Thomas himself carving this, but he would have had a lodge and they had to work very closely together 
to make this fit in this three-dimensional way. It's a very sophisticated piece of design. And I think it stands very well on its own, almost as a sort of piece of sculpture and architecture. And then when we put that back into the window, and this colossal scale, when we think about uh, importance of this new style in England, which really followed right away to the end of the Middle Ages as we know them, and then think back to the beginning about what Canterbury means liturgically, religiously, um, and in terms of ecclesiastical hierarchy and the coming of Christianity to England, going back to the sixth century. It really is totally unique, um, very, very special.